see me? Hi, everybody. Good evening. Phil Gilchrist here, Executive Director at the Anton Art Center in Mount Clemens. Uh, we're here for our December Sad Art Day program, sponsored by First State Bank. Um, it is an evening of puppetry with uh, puppeteer extraordinaire Mary Ellen Clark. Welcome, Mary Ellen. Hello. I'm Mary Ellen. You can call me Miss Mary Ellen today. And our group is called the Clark Family Players. I learned how to work with puppets by joining the Detroit Puppeteers Guild and the National Guild, the National organization called Puppeteers of America. And that's how I learned how to make puppets, manipulate them, and put on shows. Now today, I had a hard time because all of the puppets wanted to come and I had to pick certain ones. And so I said, who's going to be first? Oh, they all wanted to be first too. So I picked the smallest one to start the program. A baby bumblebee. And you, you probably know the song about the baby bumblebee. You know where you find the bumblebee. You're going to bring it home to your mother and then it bites you and you squish it and then you don't have any bumblebee to bring home. Well, this little bumblebee is a finger puppet. And I just put it on my finger. If you have small fingers, you can put two fingers in there. This baby bumblebee is part of a bumblebee family. So I'm going to get the mother and the father bumblebee to show you the rest of the family. <laughs> Now the mother and father are a different kind of puppet. They're called glove puppets. And as you know, bumblebees are insects. They have a certain number of legs. Sometimes the puppet has the same number, but not always. And if we flip them up and down like that, it looks as if their wings are moving. I said they're glove puppets and I'm going to show you the glove part. This side has a glove with six fingers. So as you can see, I have only five and I can't put it in that leg. This puppet has five and you can see it looks just like a glove, just like a glove. When it's not flying, it can walk but it's really looking for something. You know what bees are looking for? Flowers. So I'm going to see if I can find a nice flower for these bees. And when the bees see the flower, they just go right to the middle of the flower to get that pollen. So here's a beautiful flower for them to come right into the middle take the pollen. And when they do that, something happens. Oh, help, help, get these bees away from me. Oh my goodness. The flower turned into a little girl, a hand puppet and a trick puppet. So it has two uses, it has a little trick. And I'm going to show you that it's a hand puppet because it has hands. And those hands can do different things. They can pick up things. They can wave. She can take a bow. They can clap. She can cry. Let me show you the beautiful hat again. Isn't that stunning? So here we have the hand puppet and we did the glove and the finger. Let's see what's next. Oh, I have another hand puppet. But you're not going to recognize that it is a hand puppet right away. And as a puppeteer, the puppeteer's job is to make 
the puppet come alive. That's what I have to do with this puppet. Little Tommy Turtle. Now can you tell that it's a hand puppet? You see the two front feet can move and his head can move as well so that he looks as if he's walking. Sometimes he goes down into his shell just like that. That protects him in case he has any enemies. Or maybe in case it gets too cold, he could go inside there. I don't know. Here he is, looking right at you. Do you can you see him smile? All right, on to the next. And I'm using my suitcase as my little puppet land for the puppets to come from and for me to carry them. Let's go back to the glove puppets because not only can I show you how to, use, how to move them, but they can be used for many different things. You can do a little story with them, a song, or a lesson. Now this is a little lesson. You know that song, the eensy weensy spider goes up the water spout, then down comes the rain and the spider comes out. Out comes the sun, dries up all the rain and the eensy weensy spider goes up the spout again. Now the lesson there is about the water cycle. It continues. The rain, just like the rain today, comes down, the sun comes out, the water vapor goes up into the clouds until it gets, they get so full that they lose the water and we have the rain. Now this spider isn't too scary. Would you like to see a bigger one? I know you would. This is a really big spider and spiders, which are not insects, have more legs than the insects. So we'll see how many legs <laughs> this spider has. It's enough to What do me. you think <laughs> the name of this spider is? The tarantula. Now it is a glove puppet. And since I have only five fingers, some of my fingers will not go into all of the legs. Let's see how many legs there are. Let's see. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So a spider has eight legs. Now this puppet looks as if it has only two eyes, but spiders have a lot more than two eyes and they're right on top of their head in a little circle so they can look all around when they're trying to get insects to eat. Imagine how big a cobweb would be made from a spider like this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's a very realistic thought. I know. I don't want to think about that cobweb. <laughs> Puppets are made to do all kinds of things. And the puppets you see a lot of on Sesame Street are mouth puppets. <laughs> they have a mouth that opens and closes. And they do a lot of talking, but I don't have a talking dog, but he does bark. Ah, ah, and he does tricks. This puppet was made to play baseball. Do you notice that hat he has on with the D? Looks as if he wants to help the tigers out. 
So he's been practicing his catching. And when you have a partner, the partner throws the ball and then the dog catches it in its mouth when you get good at it. And sometimes the tigers need all the help they can get. So they might call on this dog, you never know. There's Velcro inside the mouth so that the ball doesn't fall out once it gets in there. Let's see another mouth puppet. This one has a lot of fun at the circus. He likes to do tumbling, juggling, and sometimes even does a little acrobatics or tightrope walking. Our little clown. Oh, I thought I'd never get out of there. It was kind of stuffy in there. Well, you're right. You were in with a lot of puppets. Yeah, I want to stay away from the bees, though. They kind of scare me, the bee, you know. You know what they do. That's right. Now, you have a nice mouth. Yeah, it's a big one, isn't it? And because I'm using my hand in your mouth, I really can't manipulate your arms unless... I add a rod to your arm. And then I can make your arm go up or down, do different things. Oh, thank you. That was nice of you. <laughs> well, you have nice long legs and a colorful outfit. I suppose you have a lot of fun working in the circus. I love it, except when they bring out that pail of water and try to splash me. Oh, yeah, that would get you all wet. Well, time for the next puppet. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Some very easy-to-make puppets are stick puppets. I'm going to show you how to make a stick puppet and how to use it as well as make a stage. I'm sure you have some game boards at home. These boards are from my game called Sorry. When I stand them up next to each other, they become a little stage for my stick puppets. With the stick puppets, just draw a picture and tape it to the back of a stick. With these stick puppets, I'm going to tell a little story. So behind the stage, I'm going to put them out in the order of their appearance in the story. And you may have figured out, this is the story of the Billy Goat's Gruff. This is the story of the Billy Goat's Gruff. This is the baby Billy Goat, the middle Billy Goat, the big Billy Goat, and the villain, the troll. Once upon a time, there were three billy goats. And they had eaten all the grass on one side of a bridge. In order to get to the other side, they had to go by a troll. And the troll liked to eat billy goats. So the goats put their heads together to come up with a plan to get past that troll. The first billy goat started across the bridge. Trip, trap, trip, trap. And when it got to the middle of the bridge, the troll popped up and he said, who's going across my bridge? And the baby billy goat said, oh, it's just a baby billy goat. Oh, I like to eat billy goats. You don't want to eat little old me. 
my big brother is coming very soon. Oh, really? Well, I'd rather have a full meal than a puny snack. I guess I'll let you go across. So the troll hid and the goat went across the bridge. Pretty soon, the next billy goat came along. Trip, trap, trip, trap, and we got to the middle. The troll popped up and he said, ah, who's going across my bridge? And the middle billy goat said, it's just a middle billy goat. Oh, good. I like to eat billy goats. Oh, you don't want to eat little old me. My really big brother's coming along very soon. He'll taste much better. Hmm. Well, I guess I'd rather have a full meal than a puny snack. So you may go across. And the troll hid, the goat went across to the new grass. Pretty soon, the big billy goat started across. Trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap. Who's going across my bridge? It's the big billy goat. I've been waiting for you. I'm really hungry now. I like to eat billy goats. You're not going to eat me. I'm going to fight you. And they started fighting. And the big billy goat knocked the troll right into the water. They never saw him again. So the big billy goat went across the bridge to join his brothers and they all had the new grass. Now that's one version of that story. You can turn it around to suit your own selves and make up your own endings or beginnings. I'm going to show you another little puppet theater, but this puppet theater is for finger puppets. It's two-sided so that you get the woodland seen on that side and the little cottage on the other side. And it comes with animal finger puppets that can go underground like the groundhog, in the tree like the owl, or under the tree like the mouse and the squirrel. And the little bunny can go underneath or above. You can also make stick puppets that tell a lesson. Now this is a very short lesson. It has two teeth in it, baby teeth and permanent teeth. And you can tell the story or the lesson about baby teeth starting to get loose when you're about five years old and then when they come out and you get your permanent teeth, how you have to be very careful and take very good care of them because they have to last a long time. And notice the big roots on them. So that's a little lesson you can do. No end to the things that you can come up with. Just your imagination can go wild. Now another puppet is the rod puppet. And here's a very pretty one. Oh. Notice the hair. Ah. And this is how she's made. This part came from some lotion and after I emptied it out, put a rod on it so that she can turn around, bend over, do a little dance. But if I put my hand in this part, 
then it looks as if your hand is her hand. Another rod puppet that's a little harder to figure out and almost magical can be used in a story or you can talk about mallard ducks and how you can tell the difference. This one has a green head, means that it's the daddy. The mother is all brown. But where's the rod? It doesn't look as if it has a rod. It looks as if it's maybe remote or something. But if you look underneath, that's where my hand is, holding the rod and twisting it back and forth. Here is another rod puppet. It's called a pop-up puppet. It's all made out of wood. And it looks as if it's a farmer. Howdy, howdy, everybody. I'm down on the farm. You know, I just finished milking the cows. Yeehaw, woohoo. So he can go down. He can come up. He's all hand carved from wood. He has his own little stand, but you can make one like that. Very simply with a cone and a rod. And here it's a pop-up. I started out with my smallest puppet and I want to end with my largest puppet, which I have right over here. And it is called a marionette because it has strings. All marionettes have strings. Watch him walk. When I tip this control this way, that leg goes up. When I tip it the other way, the other leg goes up. Let's see him do it again. Now let's have him walk. Takes giant steps if you let him. And he can turn around, he can pulse, he can sit, he can look behind. <laughs> His legs are spread enough. And he has a little friend that I brought with me. Marionettes are kind of tricky because they have strings that can get tangled up. So I put this one very carefully in this bag. And hopefully the strings did not get tangled up. Now he's a little trick marionette. I think I'll let him walk on the table. So you can see that as I tip the control, the legs on that side go up, then the other legs. But if I give him a little twist, he comes apart. So he's a breakaway marionette too. Then he magically comes back together eventually. Mm hmm There he goes. Well, this is the end of our program showing you the different kinds of puppets. Now let's review them. We had the finger puppet, glove puppet, rod puppet, stick puppets, glove puppets, marionettes. Did I say pop-up? So we had a lot of different kinds. Look for them in your house. See if you have any puppets and put them in one spot in a box or a bag so that you'll know where they are. And then you can make up your own little story or teach a lesson about something. Now I'll say goodbye from Miss Mary Ellen of the Clark Family Players and also a member of the Detroit Puppeteers Guild and the Puppeteers of America. 
If you'd like to know more about the Detroit Puppeteers Guild, the website is DetroitPuppeteersGuild.org. Thank you for coming and goodbye now. But we're just taking a short break, right? I'm going to take a short break and then I'll be back with more puppets and a story for you. All right, everybody, we're going to take a quick little intermission and do a an ornament craft. So if you have some old CDs and stuff, uh, we're going to get set up for that and we'll be right with you. Hello. So hello everyone. We're gonna do a little bit of CD art today. We've got a couple of different things that we've done. We're just gonna take some old CDs that you might have that have writing on them. And um, we're gonna turn it into a little project like this. This is one of the simplest ways to do it. Um, just taking some fabric or some um, ribbon, which is what these are done with. I just did some ribbon. Uh, and put it right through the CD. So let me show you how I did that. Here's one that I painted. So if you've got if you've got some that got painting on them, you can go ahead and or uh, I'm sorry, writing on them that you want to cover up. You can paint them any color that you want. Then all I did was take some ribbon and went ahead and used the um, hole in the middle to go around and string it all up. And just like that, I was able to string it all through and cover it up and use up some old ribbon that I really like um, to have on hand and uh, was able to make a couple of little uh, holders for it too, using some wire. I should take this off. By the way, I'm Peggy, uh, the, our education coordinator here at the Anton Art Center. Hope you guys enjoy uh, the show so far, learning a little bit about puppets. And then we're gonna have a fun puppet show coming up next. Um, so for this one, I'm gonna take a painted one and I am going to, I tried out our um, puppy paint. I did make some puppy paint, but if you get yourself a background, then you can use paint pens, you can use um, paint and draw a little scene. So I did this one blue because I'm going to try and do some uh, decorations on uh, an outdoor tree. So I'm going to hang up these colorful ones and I'm going to um, do one with like a snowflake on it to do a winter scene. Get this down a little bit so you can see it. So I'm just take that and take my pen. I'm going to draw it towards the center, do a couple of them. That's a good way for you to go ahead and use up some um, old CDs, recycle them into art. And it's also cool because it's got that built-in hole, so it makes it easy to make a, um, a hanger on it. 
And I'm just gonna add a little, a couple star bisque bursts at the end. I've got some hot glue melting so that I can uh, glue some stuff on too. Just doing a little bit of I can do it. No snowflakes are all alike. And so decorate it like that. I also have some cool things. I've got a little star that if I wanted to put in the center, I could um, hot glue that on there. I also took an old CD and painted it brown. And I was thinking that this would be a fun one to turn into a Rudolph. There, that I could turn it into a Rudolph ornament. So I got a couple of googly eyes and I'm gonna glue those on there. I was looking at pom-poms to make a red nose. And of course, because I needed it, I had no red pom-poms all different colors. But at the art center, we have so much fun stuff that when I got here, I found out someone had donated some Christmas uh, lights to us. Now, if I could actually light it up, that would be really cool. But <laughs> we're not gonna be that cool today. I'm just gonna um, put some hot glue in here and around here, and I'm gonna glue that nose in there which would be fun for making a um, snowman too. You could put um, a snowman, paint it white, put some eyes on there, put some um, something in there for a nose, make it look like a carrot. And then to do the mouth on this one, I think I'm gonna use that same. white on there just to do a little mouth at the bottom. And there's a little uh, Rudolph face. I've got some pipe cleaners over here too. If I wanted, I can make some ears or uh, some horns for him, antlers. I guess, you know what, I think I'll put them on the back and then it'll look like they're sticking out the back of his head. As you may know from some of my other videos that I've done, I love to use hot glue because it dries so quickly. Okay. So right now they kind of look like bug antenna, but I can work on that too <laughs> as I go along, make them look more like antlers. All right, so now my ornament is ready. Um, if I wanted to put an extra little um, holder on it, I could do that on the back, same thing, just glue a little loop so that I can put it on the tree or even hang it on the wall. And I'd do the same thing, I would just um, hot glue that on there. So that's a little cute one. Now, if you've got construction paper, um, you could do some little cutouts. Uh, this was done for another craft. This is a one that I just painted red. And then you could uh, glue some things on there. You could use these as a tag, or if you wanted to do some personalized ornaments, you could uh, write whatever you want in there. You could decorate this uh, like a little Christmas tree. Um, just glue that on there. If you, um, I use some glitter pens on this one to just make it look like a, um, an ornament. And if you have a bunch of writing on your CD, but you don't want to, um, and you don't have paint, you just want your shiny sides, um, all you have to do is glue two together and then you'd have, um, you cover up the writing and you would have that set like this. 
So you do your uh, two sides of writing, you're going to glue it together. And that was also a recommendation that I saw that if you wanted to do your, um, you can do a, uh, you would glue your um, loop right in the middle. You'd have uh, two CDs together and then two shiny sides that you could decorate any way that you wanted to. Now to make these an outdoor um, thing, you could get the craft paint at the store that um, for outdoor. I'm I've bought a bunch of uh, ribbon right at the dollar store, so I'm not um, I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, if I have to redo them uh, next year, then I can. And I might just uh, I love to have some uh, decorations for the winter. Are you ready? And so um, yeah, so you guys can have some fun. If you wanted to make some of your own um, homemade ornaments or um, tuck something in a little personalized uh, tag to put into uh, some homemade gifts that you might be making this year, uh, these would be great in a basket to um, share with someone else. So I hope you guys are um, enjoying our show tonight. I think we are ready for uh, Miss Mary Ellen to do our next um, our next show. So I'm going to scoot over here on my little control desk and find our camera. Let's go here. Are you guys ready for the show? We're going to start here. Okay. Let me just get you... Hello, as you know, I am Miss Mary Ellen of the Clark Family Players and a member of the Detroit Puppeteers Guild and the Puppeteers of America. And that's how I learned to manipulate puppets, to make puppets, and to perform with puppets through those two organizations. Now, today I'm going to tell you a story. This is a true story of something that happened to me when I went on a trip. And I'm going to ask my puppets from my Puppet Land suitcase to help me tell the story. The place that I went to was Florida, which is a wonderful place to go when it gets cold up here in Michigan since it's so warm down there, as you go further south, it gets warmer and warmer and warmer. It's so far away that sometimes people take an airplane. That's what I did. But then there are other people that like to drive. That takes a long time. But then you can bring back more things if you have your own car. But this trip I took on the plane. And when I got to the airport, my host and hostess were right there. They picked me up and drove me to their cottage, which was on a sandbar along the St. John's River. They took my suitcases into the house. And as I followed them up the steps, I saw some little creatures crawling on the steps, crawling up the windows. They weren't very big, but I had never seen them before. They were little lizards. And my host told me that they like them because they eat insects, especially mosquitoes, and they have plenty of mosquitoes there to feed these. Sometimes they're called chameleons, and they can change color to go with the background that they're in. Look at the nice long tail. They're not this big. They're small, and they're harmless to humans, very dangerous to insects. So that was my first adventure meeting 
these lizards. Next, they took me to an orange grove. And the orange grove farmer, well, let me tell you what an orange grove is first. It's a place where they have a lot of trees with oranges all over growing or blossoms. And the blossoms smell so fragrant. So the farmer says, we could pick some of these oranges, which we did. Because we, I knew we'd have fresh orange juice every morning. Then my host asked the farmer if he would take me for a ride on the St. John's River in his boat, because my host didn't have a boat. And he wanted to show me a good time so that I could have another adventure. So I was happy about that. I liked to go in boats. I had my shorts on because it was still daylight, uh, but the other people had big rubber boots on. I couldn't figure that out because there, there wasn't any mud. It wasn't raining, but they had these rubber boots. I just had sandals on, but I got in the boat and then I realized what they were up to. They took the boat right up to the shore where they saw some alligators sleeping in the sun. Of course, they were sleeping until they brought the boat up there and then they jumped into the water right near the boat. Oh, that was a little frightful for me, but they were having a good time laughing about it. Then I saw a log and it had a baby alligator, just like this one, almost about the same size too. Big teeth, big mouth. And he was looking at another little animal, an animal that he might eat someday, but neither one of them knew at that time that they might be enemies. So I'll show you what the other animal looked like. Two babies looking at each other. This animal was very prevalent. Well, I found out as I went along in the water lands, there were a lot of these, a lot of turtles. And this turtle, just sitting on the log, sometimes you'd see a, a log with a lot of turtles on it, like a whole turtle family. So the turtle was looking at the alligator baby. The alligator baby was looking at the turtle. They weren't talking too much. I guess they were just getting to know each other. And then I had another adventure on that same boat, swooping down over my head was a bird I had never seen in real life. I had seen it in a movie, on TV, and in the National Geographic books, but never in real life. And it swooped down right over my head. Woo! An eagle. I never expected to see an eagle on the, as I was going on that river. And of course, it was a lot better to look at the eagle than the alligators. But it didn't stay. It just flew right by over my head, looking for things to eat, maybe. Maybe fish, maybe mice, whatever it could find that looked delicious. All of these distractions prevented me from noticing what was going on with the mosquitoes. Oh, I started getting so itchy. 
my legs were almost completely itchy because I didn't realize the mosquitoes were eating me up. That's why the people had longer pants on. They didn't tell me about the mosquitoes. Well, when I got home, I counted about 30 mosquito bites. Now this mosquito has a little noise to go with it. Let's see if we can make the noise of the mosquito. Sometimes that's a good warning to watch out for the mosquitoes because they have that noise. Well, that was all the adventures for a whole day. So, oh, what's going to happen tomorrow? Well, when I woke up the next day and I went outside, because remember, the cottage is right on the river. And I wanted to go and look at the water. When I went out there, I saw something beautiful. My favorite bird. A whole flock of them flying north over the river. I never saw penguins flying. I've seen them walking on piers, but I never saw them flying like that. Now you notice they have a big bill and they love fish. So they would swoop down, not while I was watching them, but that's what they do. They swoop down and get the fish and they have a little pouch here that gets bigger and bigger. It expands the more fish that it catches. Around the edge of it, it's kind of rough because I had a chance to feed penguins one time. I fed them little fish that were being sold on the pier. And as, I, as it took the fish from me, I could feel that roughness on its bill. So these penguins were all flying north. I don't know if they were going up to a coffee shop or something to have a little social activity, but then at night they would come back so they must have set their alarm to go up in the morning and then come back maybe for bringing all their dinner home to their family. My host and hostess had another adventure for me for that day. They took me to a place called Silver Springs. Silver Springs is a body of water that's very warm. And certain animals who like warm water were swimming there. Animals I had never seen before. And I don't know if you've seen them either. They're called manatees. Manatees. I brought twins with me today. Twin manatees. Now manatees are mammals. So the babies have to nurse the mother, get their milk from the mother. And mammals have to breathe oxygen. So the mother takes the baby on her back up to the surface of the water so that both of them can get air and then they come back down again. Now, when the baby is small, it can stay underwater for only five minutes. So the mother has to keep doing that over and over again until the baby learns how to do it all by itself. And as it gets older, it can stay under for about 20 minutes. But Manatees are in danger. They're in danger from boats that have motors and propellers because they get too close to those propellers and that injures them. So we have to be careful if we're 
in water with manatees to stay away from them or have to teach them how to stay away from the boats. Now I'm going to take them back to puppet land. That Silver Spring tourist attraction was kind of far away from where we were staying, so that was all we could do that day. The next day, because Florida is right off the Atlantic Ocean, my host and hostess wanted to take me to the beach where we could see the waves coming in. So we got our lawn chairs, took them with us, and set them up right on the edge of the water so we could put our feet in the water and watch the waves coming in. So I had my camera to take pictures. And all of a sudden, a wave that we didn't expect came up. The water hit the camera, and poof, it went up in smoke. So that was the end of the camera. The next thing I did, I decided, well, I wasn't going to take pictures, but I knew there were a lot of seashells on the beach. They're free. They're all different sizes and colors. I thought I'd walk along the beach and find some shells. And shells I did find. I found some shells that belong to scallops. I don't know if you've ever eaten any scallops, but they're very delicious. And they're called shell fish. So this is what the shells of scallops look like. And if they were able to open their mouth for you, you would see they look like this. See those big eyes? Oh. Now that pinkish part is the part that we eat. Birds like scallops too. So this is what they do because those shells are very tightly closed up. So one of the birds will take a uh, scallop way up in the sky, drop it down and then it breaks open and they have a nice tidy little snack. Now what kind of bird would do that? Ooh, I like to do this because I like to see those eyes moving. <laughs> oh, let's see what kind of bird does that. You know, we have these birds in Michigan too. But you always see them by the seaside. Ooh, the seagulls. And once again, by doing this up and down motion, looks as if it's flying. So these birds in Michigan are found at parks, sometimes by the supermarket, because they're looking for food. They like to be by the river. They can find fish in the river too. Let it fly back to puppet land. There are a lot of restaurants that sell seafood because they're right, right by the sea. Naturally, they're going to serve different kinds of seafood. But one of the seafood dishes they had was called swordfish. I said, swordfish? Oh, you have to go deep sea fishing for swordfish. And sometimes they'll stuff the swordfish with the, the taxidermist would do that. And they'll put it up on the wall and brag about finding it. So I happen to have one here in puppet land, but it's Eluding me right now. Let's see. Here it is. Oh. Here. 
here it is. Now it's much bigger than this. Really big, really big. And they sell swordfish steaks in the restaurant. Ooh, and put up swordfish on the wall. So sometimes you'll be in a seafood restaurant. You'll see one of these up on the wall and you can say, mother, that, or father, that's a swordfish. I recognize that. And the restaurant might give out a little souvenir to advertise some of the things that it's selling, like crabs. I don't know if you like crabs or not, but they could be very delicious. That's another shellfish. Oysters, another shellfish, but you know what? I went on another boat ride and they took me to a restaurant where they were serving alligator. And you know what? I tried it. Oh, it was very delicious, very delicious. I saw some birds that I recognized from Michigan. Oh, I said, now I know where those birds go in the winter. And the bird that I liked the most was our state bird, the little robin. Because it was winter, there were no robins up in Michigan. There was the robin on the ground looking for a worm and then bringing it back to its little babies. And they were all twittering and twittering and saying in bird talk, feed me, feed me, feed me. And that's just what she was doing, feeding the little bird. Oh, and then I saw another bird. And this bird was making a lot of noise. But I recognized it. It sounded like this. Well, that bird was a woodpecker. We have woodpeckers too. But here's the mother woodpecker. And because she has red feathers on top of her head, they call her the red-headed woodpecker. And she was getting the insects from in the tree and helping the tree to stay healthy because the insects would cause something to happen to the tree and make the tree fall over. That happened in one case where the man chased the woodpecker away and the, the insects just ate away the tree. So it fell over. They also find the insects in rotted wood. Sometimes a tree will fall over and just be left there. And that makes a good tasty meal for the woodpeckers. And they can bring them back, feed their babies too. This bird, this very colorful bird, is found in many places in Florida. The parrot. Isn't that beautiful colors? And some people like to teach it how to talk. But the only thing I've ever heard it say is, Polly wants a cracker. Polly wants a cracker. Polly wants a cracker. You have to, you have to get a better repertoire. When it gets hot in Florida, because the people go down there in December or January, and then as the weather gets warmer and warmer, especially on a sandbar, there are creatures that come out called snakes and ants. And my friends 
usually leave at that time of the season. But there is an animal that likes to control the snakes. It's called the red-tailed hawk. And it swoops down because it has very good vision. And it can see these snakes from very high in the sky. Snake, it swoops down and picks up the snake, takes it home to its babies. Or if its babies are gone, it just eats it all by itself. What about the ants? Oh, the ants are called the red fire ants. And the reason for that is when you get bitten by these ants, you feel as if your body is on fire. That bite is so painful. Then I realized why people were wearing those rubber boots because they didn't want to step on the ants and they didn't want to step on a snake. But ants are our most important insect. We could not live without ants. And the reason is because the ants make little tunnels in the ground. And it's those little tunnels that aerate the soil so that plants can grow. Because if we didn't have the plants, we wouldn't have food. So we couldn't live. So as pesty as ants are or painful sometimes, they're still our most valuable insect. A tourist attraction that causes lots of boys and girls to have fun on rides, on seeing shows, seeing parades, when they go to find a little animal called a mouse. And they come from all over the world to see the mouse. And when you see the mouse, you want to take the mouse home. You like it so much and you want to have fun. There are all different ways to do that. So here's the mouse. I know you'll recognize it. Little Mickey Ooh, and little Minnie. And you know, you can play with them and get them to do puppet like movements. Mickey can kick his legs like that, dance around. He can dance with Minnie. There a lot of fun to play with. They can hold hands, they can clap their hands together. It's just up to you to make them move in different directions. Let's see if they'll sit here. Oh, look at that. Let's see if Mickey will sit there. I think he had too much ice cream. Oh no, he's good. Well, they have puppets like Mickey and Minnie. And this is a hand puppet. So I'm going to show you how I manipulate it. I put two fingers in the head, one thumb in that hand, and two fingers in that hand. So I'll do it right in front of you. So if you have a hand puppet, you'll know just how to make it move. And if your hand is too small, you can stuff it, different parts of it, with some cotton to make it fit. So here we have the hand puppet. It moves its hands. 
to clap. It can take a bow. It can touch its head. It can wave goodbye and dance around depending. If you put some music on, teach it how to dance. So I'm going to have it wave goodbye now because we've come to the end of this segment. And I showed you how you can take puppets to tell a story. In my case, I told a story about my life and all those things really happened to me. And I happen to have puppets to go along with it. Sometimes I buy puppets in the land that I visit. And that's where I bought the manatee puppet and the red-tailed hawk puppet. So remember, my name is Miss Mary Ellen of the Clark Family Players. And I'm brought here today by the Anton Art Center for your pleasure. I belong to the Detroit Puppeteers Guild. And if you would like to know more about puppetry, you can go on the Guild's website, which is DetroitPuppeteersGuild.org. Goodbye, everybody. Good job, Minnie. <laughs> so thank you so much for uh, joining us tonight and thank you to uh, Miss Mary Ellen for bringing her puppets here. We hope you had a great time and we'll see you next month.